Hello, my name is Kyler and I am the designer of BaseBot. BaseBot is an open source custom drivetrain design intended to be modified to meet the needs of your team. I want to tell you a little bit about myself and about why I put this uh, drivetrain design together um, and how it can help your team. Uh, I'm an alum of Team 10355 Project Peacock, uh, First Tech Challenge. During the Velocity Vortex season, I went to the World Championships and I was very intrigued by a lot of the custom robot designs there. And I wanted to do my own custom design uh, the next year. And I had no idea where to get started. At Worlds, I saw a lot of designs that were similar to this with two drive pods composed of two plates on either side that encase the wheels and that basically allow for a somewhat uh, modular drive system. And it would also allow for these plates to be whatever shape and size you needed. And I really liked that idea and that concept uh, in terms of drivetrain. But from just seeing it at Worlds, it was very difficult to figure out the minute details of it. Uh, for somebody who had never done something like this, uh, a fully custom robot. Uh, I had always just built with Tetrix up to that point. Uh, we we were in the process of switching over to Actobotics that year, and later we we switched over to Gobilda. Uh, but at the time, as somebody who just you know put some Tetrix pieces together, I had no idea how to do this. Uh, I did know how to do CAD, but I didn't know how to use CAD as a tool. For design so that was what I tried to figure out how to do the next year and this is the robot that we ended up with uh, as you can see uh, it's very very similar to how the base bot design works uh, with the chain driven mechanum wheels and these four plates uh, these plates extend way up uh, to support different mechanisms of the robot but the fundamentals of the drivetrain are the same as base bot but I didn't just end up with this after a few days of catting. This robot design took me uh, almost the entire season to figure out. Now, even leading up to that, uh, most of the season we had these uh, we had these three D printed bevel drives that were very not reliable, and the bevel gears clicked a lot, and it was just not a lot of fun that simple realization that you can base mount the motors and chain drive it it seems very obvious in retrospect but to somebody who had no idea what they were doing and had only built with tetrix up to that point this was not something that was obvious now these days there are a lot of great resources out there to help uh, with ftc design uh, such as game manual zero as well as uh, the FTC Discord and the Swerve Alliance Discord. There's a lot of great resources out there for uh, FTC designers. But when I was doing this, I had no idea that any of that existed. And I spent a long time just getting all these holes to match up and getting everything to line up properly. The other thing is that I had difficulty explaining the concept to other people so having never built a custom robot before nobody on our team understood uh, this plate based system that i was trying to uh, figure out so i was working on this by myself uh, if i had had an example that i could show to other people on my team and say this is how, what i want this to look like uh, that would have helped out a whole lot for someone who knows what they're doing designing a drivetrain like this uh, should only take a few hours or so. These mechanum wheels and these and these uh, motors and spacing them out properly and dimensioning everything out uh, to work the way you want it, that should not take very long. But if you are new to this and you don't have any mentors who have done this before, this can be a big challenge. So when I started designing BaseBot, I, I was thinking about what would I have wanted if I, when I was starting out trying to learn how to do a custom drivetrain? 
mounting these motors and driving the wheels and all of that kind of thing is the thing that I spent the longest on. Whereas what I should have been spending my time on was the mechanisms. This is uh, Project Peacock's Skystone robot. And the way that it was designed was based off of BaseBot. If, if you look uh, closely, you can tell that these mechanum wheels and the way that they're mounted is exactly like the mechanum BaseBot chassis. This is uh, like nothing has been tweaked about the way the wheels mount, but everything else has been tweaked uh, on this plate. So if you look at this, they've made these plates uh, suit the very specific needs of this robot. So like these inner plates support this lift that leans back and uh, this outer plate serves as kind of a barrier uh, to the outside. And it also serves as mounting places for their rev hubs and their numbers and their uh, team markers. But all of this is a result of not having to spend the time focusing on the drivetrain. And they were able to spend all of their time focusing on the mechanisms and how the mechanisms interact with each other. Which, in my opinion, is a much more interesting challenge as well as... Uh, it results in a much more interesting robot that's much more functional. There's lead screws in there, there's linear slides, there's a virtual four bar. This robot was designed by a team of primarily freshmen, high school freshmen, who had not done a whole lot of CAD in previous years. In fact, their robot from the year before looked like this. If you're wondering why it doesn't have any mechanisms on it, it's because they didn't get around to catting the whole robot because they weren't using CAD as a design tool. They were just using it as a way to document the robot uh, design that they had put together with Actobotics. Uh, and this design process I've seen a lot of teams doing. They just throw something together with Actobotics. They spend a lot of time tweaking it in real life and then they put off the CAD to the last minute and they just use it as something to put in the notebook. Uh, this is not the intended use of CAD. Computer-aided design is a tool uh, which should allow you to figure out uh, what your robot is going to look like and meet your own precise needs with very highly customized parts. Um, that's where CAD is really useful. This, this robot is not perfect by any means. And it's not the most optimal design. Uh, it has a unique concept of this lift that leans forward. Um, however, the, uh, the robot itself has many flaws. But the main thing I'm concerned with as a mentor is what is the team learning and how are they applying what they've learned? There's a lot of valuable design skills that were used in the making of this robot that they could have never gotten to with a robot like this. Over here, you can see pocketing. You can just generally see that most of the parts of this robot are more well thought out and more highly considered than this robot. And even uh, by the same means than this robot, um, this robot the, uh, is just a drivetrain in CAD. Uh, these mechanisms never actually got built because they got CADded so late uh, in the process. But for a lot of teams, that starting point of how do I start designing in CAD is the hardest part. If you're a team that has been around for a little while, has done some CAD, but never used CAD as a proper design tool, uh, and you're interested in doing more custom things for your robot, uh, <clears throat> I believe that BaseBot is uh, the resource that you need in order to take that extra step to design a fully custom robot. If you are a more experienced team who already does custom design, uh, I believe that BaseBot is a good resource that you can use to help the teams in your community uh, learn how to do custom design as well. Because from what I've seen, it's 
really difficult to make that leap from using all kit parts to doing full custom stuff. Uh, and for teams who want to do that, it might not be an option just because they don't know how. I'm going into my third year of college now, and I've been mentoring some teams. Uh, and Basebot as a tool has made it much e easier for me to teach the members of those teams how to design their own custom robots. Basically, I can point to Basebot and say, this is what a decent custom drivetrain looks like. And um, here it, are the steps that you can take to design your own or to modify this setup to meet your needs. In the next video, I'll be talking about how to implement Basebot into your design process so that you can start working on your own custom robot. Thanks for watching. Please go check out the Basebot Discord if you have any questions. Uh, I'll be in there and I can answer whatever questions you have. Thank you.